If you can see that. Is it in reverse? No, no, we, we see it the right way. And for okay. you, it shows up mirrored. Yeah. But yeah, we see the, the correct thing. Let's see, how much is this? All right. So, um, so all right, so I'm going to review this. This is Cedar Lane and Cedar Lane. This is, this is interesting, Mike. It's like I'm having a conversation with you. <laughs> It's like a private review, yeah, with with a lot of random people uh, just kind of lurking. Um, so Cedar Lane is a uh, frozen food company that actually does some pretty decent quality stuff. Um, some of it's uh, vegetarian, some of it's gluten free, some of it's just kind of like organic and and natural flavorings and stuff like that. It tends to be found in your uh, local grocer in areas that are more on the, the healthier side, like closer to the Amy's Organic or the, um, you know, some of the real boutique type frozen food companies, which is, it, it makes me cringe to even say that there's boutique frozen food companies. But, um, so this is Cedar Lane Natural Foods. It's a different line from a normal Cedar Lane food. Um, and you can kind of see the, the picture on there. That looks really, really good in my opinion. Um, it is 20 grams of protein, 10 grams of fiber, 4 grams of sugar. It's a high fiber natural, fruit, uh, natural food. And it has green chilies, jack, and cheddar cheeses. So we got a lot of cheese and a lot of chili. And, uh, and as usual, I'm going to be reviewing this in the microwave. Um, do you like like southwestern food, like Tex-Mex type stuff? Oh yeah. Okay. What I'm hoping, I mean, you know, I, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be um, somewhat decent quality. Oh, by the way, this is four dollars and fifty-five cents, so it's on the high side. Uh, but most of the kind of all-natural, organic type. Um, Frozen foods tend to be within the four to seven dollar range. Yeah, and uh, uh, someone here in the comments on YouTube said, "Is the food more like vegan, vegetarian?" Uh, some of it is vegan, uh, but this one is not. This one has egg, milk, soy, and wheat. Uh, so you know, Cedar Lane does have ones that are gluten free. They do have ones that are vegan and vegetarian. I've reviewed some of those before. This one is just uh, vegetarian. That's a good question. Um, like again, you know, this is kind of standard. Uh, no plastic here. This is a cardboard thing that, to be honest, I I have uh, I have mixed feelings about. I know the cardboard is uh, I, I actually I don't know whether it's recycled, but most but it is you know less waste, uh, faster time to decompose, and that's great. However, in some of the natural natural frozen food companies, um, when you do a cardboard thing, it tends to have two problems. One is it tends to get soggy on the bottom, um, and that's never fun, or it leaves kind of like a film like on the table or on your plate. The second is that sometimes the plastic film doesn't adhere. The adhesive is not as nice as, um, as how it sticks to the plastic. So th there's pros and cons to that. Um, this one is, again, in the cardboard, it's like like just a puddle, like a frozen block of kind of grossness, but nothing really looks good frozen, um, in a frozen state. Let me get a, get a fork. I'm supposed to puncture this, and let's see. Oh, my God. Uh, where's, I don't even know where the directions are. Oh, I tucked it in. Okay, so I'm supposed to puncture this several times with a fork, place tray in microwave and heat for four to four and a half minutes. So I'm going to go with the, the standard three puncture. I'm going to stick this in the microwave. So I tend to kind of use the, uh, the lesser of the two numbers when it comes to microwaving. Um, 
because as it says here, variations do occur in microwave ovens. Um, there is a conventional oven uh, heating instruction that's preheat to 350 and cook for 40 minutes. And uh, I just don't have the patience for that. Yeah, yeah, if you can just use a microwave, you know. <laughs> Because no one really wants to wait for, for our food, especially when we just, again, throw it in the microwave. I, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I know a couple people, actually, who do not own a microwave. I, that's fine. I understand that. That's, that's their choice. Uh, but this is a convenient food. I mean, let's not, let's, you know, let's not pretend that this is like a high, high you know, quality you know, just as good as homemade. It never is. It yeah. may be really, really good compared to other frozen meals, but you're going to buy this because you're in a rush or you want something pre-made or you're living by yourself and you don't want to cook a whole big batch. Any of those reasons um, point to you're probably going to want to choose the four-minute option, not the 40-minute option. My so, there are a couple um, things. Um, can you see me? Because I, yeah, go. you're you're a little little glitchy right now. Yeah, my video was uh, was glitching a bit. There you go. Okay, so so someone here in the comments uh, asked, "What's the best pizza you've ever had?" Yeah. Best pizza. Uh, the best pizza, wait, frozen or, uh, they don't, does it say? They don't say? I assume frozen. Yeah. Um, the best pizza, I've, I'll, I'll answer both questions. The, the best pizza I ever had, so I went to school, I went to college in Providence, Rhode Island. And in Providence, there's a, um, there's a Italian district there called Federal Hill. And there is a pizza called Cecilia's. In fact, I think there's one in Boston as well. They did another, like, branch or another franchise or whatever in Boston. But it is, like, a baked, super thick, like, amazing pizza. I still, to this day, dream about it. Um, it had a nice, flaky, buttery, kind of croissant-like crust on the bottom. It was, like, at least an inch thick with stuff packed inside, just layers of cheese and things like that, and then kind of like a pie crust on the top with cheese and then sauce and then Parmesan cheese. It was amazing. Like, you know those those shows on Food Network where it's like the best thing you've ever eaten? Um, that would be my one. Cecilia's in Providence. Um, they take forever, like, to, to cook them because it's like basically cooking a, a pie. Um, but I would, you know, I would know that I was going to get out of class and then get back to my apartment by 6 o'clock, and I would literally, like, step out of class, order it at, like, 4.30, and then know that it was going to be there at 6.30, you know, by the time I got home. So I really highly recommend that if you live in the area. Um, the best frozen pizza, in fact, I, I titled this, my review of it, as best frozen pizza in the freezer aisle. And that is a, um, it's, again, ones that you would find near Cedar Lane. It's called uh, Bella Monica. And they have uh, their flatbread pizzas. And they have this added benefit of they're actually gluten-free flatbread pizzas. Um, and you wouldn't even guess it. I mean, you, you might have the kind of... Uh, fear that a gluten-free crust doesn't taste good, uh, but it is amazing. You wouldn't even know it was gluten-free. By the way, speaking of amazing, that thing smells really, really good. Yes, I heard it beeping in the background. Yeah, let me take it out. All right. So this is going to be tricky. Let's see if I can get... I'm going to try to get a good view of this. I'm going to try to take the camera here. Yeah, I was going to say, you definitely don't want to tilt the tray and then everything falls out. There you go. So uh, this, you know, I mean, it, it's definitely a, a big kind of mess in terms of... Um, 
So, whoop, let me tilt this back a little bit. It's definitely a big um, garbled mess. It's <laughs> the best way to describe it. But it smells amazing. Um, you, it, it smells like an Italian dish. It's like all, all you really smell is that um, spicy kind of tomato base sauce. I'm going to try to cut open. Because it's basically like a um, like a stuffed pepper. The difference is what's stuffed inside of here is cheese, not um, not like meat. I don't know if you've ever I don't know if you like stuffed peppers, but there's a Stouffer stuffed pepper that is um, pretty amazing. All right, I can't cut it with fork. I have to use a knife. Which is, I don't know if that's good or bad. Might mean that it's um, good s consistency, or it also might mean it's like super rubbery. Okay, this is not going to win any awards for it looking awesome. Um, because it's, I mean, it's a soggy pepper, right? With a lot of tomato sauce on top. Um, cheese is, I don't know if you can see that cheese, but it's, it's stringy. It's dripping. When you smell it, it definitely you pick up more of the kind of um, you know Mexican type flavoring um, in the smell. It's it's definitely cooked all the way through. It's definitely hot. And let's see how this tastes. Hmm. It doesn't, the consistency isn't as soggy as I thought it would be. You know, when I, when I cut into it, it with a knife, it cut pretty easily. And I thought, okay, this is going to be like mushy, which I don't think is bad when it comes to peppers. Um, you know, like I love grilled peppers when you take kind of like raw, pep, raw green peppers or something like that. And when you just like stir fry it on a, on a pan or on a skillet and it gets like really kind of soft and soggy, put it on bratwurst, that type of stuff. Um, I don't mind that. But with something like that, with this, you kind of want some sort of structure, like some stability to the bite. And when I bit into it, it did still have a kind of, not a crunch, but it had a, a like, um, like, uh, like substantial bite to it. Like when I bit into it, I definitely felt like my, my teeth were biting into a pepper instead of just kind of, you know, smush. I don't, I don't know how to best describe that. Does that make sense? I don't. Yeah. It's a good consistency. In terms of the cheese, I'd be lying if I said I could pick out the differences between the Jack and the cheddar cheese. Like, I know what they taste. I know the difference of how they taste separate, but it's all melted together. You're not going to be able It's just a blend. It's a cheese blend. In terms of the spiciness, um, there's just a little, little hint of spicy. There's, it's not something where it's not, it doesn't have a substantial amount of heat. In fact, um, you know, I always use my wife as a guide because she does not like spicy at all. Like she would eat this and she would be like, eh, okay, it's got a little, little kick to it. For me, I don't even, I can barely pick up a kick to it, uh, mainly because I like super spicy things. Are there any questions? Um, no, some people are making uh, some comments uh, talking about uh, ch ch a chili relleno. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Uh, traditionally, a chili relleno is stuffed with just cheese or a combination of meat and cheese. It's not the same as a, tr as a traditional stuffed bell pepper. It's a Latin-based dish. Yeah, just uh, no questions, really. Uh, although there is one question, but I don't know if it'll... It might kind of take away from the review, but uh, someone asked, uh, Bispo98 asked, what's the best frozen food you have ever reviewed? on freezer burns, There's which has got to be a tough one. You know, it's a tough one. Um, you got to kind of put it in categories, and, and that's fine. Um, totally have to put it on, in categories because you can't compare ice cream to, you know, a waffle to um, a pizza to a burrito, that type of thing. Um, 
I mean, I, I have found, okay, so I'm almost on my fourth year of doing these reviews. And I can even pick up, I can see that as a whole, the industry has advanced so much since I first started. Um, not only in terms of what these companies are putting out and the quality that they're putting out, but the um, but also kind of what people are expecting, people are buying. I mean, the the variety in the freezer aisle has at least doubled since when I start first started doing these reviews. So I think that's it's really interesting. Like here's a perfect example. The technology perfect example is um, Healthy Choice has the um, has the steamers, which you um, have the meat or the starch and the vegetables on this tray, and then the sauce is down below, and so it steams the vegetables and it makes it super crispy um, and ste like a nice steamed thing instead of it all being flash frozen in this brick. Um, like that type of tech, I, I know people always laugh when I say that it's like technology. Like I get way too passionate about this stuff, but like for someone who reviews frozen food every day, um, that's like a big deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that's, that, that's a really big deal because it totally changes the, the consistency of things. Um, what I will say is, uh, you know, there are a lot of really, really good dishes out there. The first five-star review I gave was Margaritaville Coconut Calypso Shrimp, which was really awesome, still is awesome. Um, I gave a five-star review to Bridgeford Monkey Bread, which I think is really good. And are they like amazing, amazing foods? No, but for the value, for the quality control, for the ease of preparation, they're like the best in the freezer aisle. So I think that's pretty good. I have my favorites. I have like really big nostalgia for um, Stouffer's French Bread Pizza, which I think a lot of people have nostalgia for. Of course, Bagel Bites and Pizza Rolls, you know, that type of thing. I mean, some of those classics are still classics, right? Hungry Man Fried Chicken, which used to be Swanson's Fried Chicken, which used to be the Swanson's, original Swanson's TV dinners. You know, like all of that stuff is, you know, that reminds me of my childhood. So I think those will always be kind of big things. I don't know if that answers your question. Thank you for the, for the, um, for the info on this, though. And, and you know, um, that's, that's good to know. I mean, traditionally stuffed with cheese um, as opposed to um, a stuffed pepper makes total, total sense. Um, what I think I was going for more was um, a pepper that is stuffed with anything but frozen and then nuked in the microwave. How would that consistency be? And the consistency of this is actually better than the consistency of the Stouffer's stuffed pepper. And this is my dinner, by the way. <laughs> oh, so let's talk about the nutrition facts. Wow. 360 calories, 20 grams of total fat, 10 grams of saturated fat. That's, that's the scary part, the 10 grams of saturated fat. You really should have, at most, I don't know, 20 grams of saturated fat all day. So that's kind of, uh, that's interesting. Uh, and, and the other thing is like, this is, you know, this is a, this is a meal for one. Um, it's serving for one, which is good. Um, so, I mean, this would definitely in itself would fill me up. I'm pretty happy with this. Based on my comments, Mike, what, what do you think I should rate this? Hmm. Now you're having me decide? Yeah. Ah. Uh, I don't know. It, it sounds it sounds pretty good. Um, I, w I wouldn't give it a five because that I, that would be probably stretching a bit. I'd say say around. Would you say around a four? Yeah, I would. Um, I would say it's it's not quite a four and a half. I think a four and a half for me would have a little more spice and kind of a little more um, pepper to cheese. Um, quantity is good. You saw it was super easy. I just poked holes in the plastic and put it in the microwave. That was easy. Um, quality is is definitely up there, but it's it's not my favorite. But I certainly would buy it again. 
Um, I, I, I think a, f a solid four out of five star would be my rating for that. And, and again, how much did you say it costs? It's four dollars and fifty-five cents, at least where where I got it. I have not seen Cedar Lane cheaper than four dollars. Um, maybe like three eighty-nine or something like that. But these are ones that tend to tend to command a little higher price. So, um, and I got this at Harris Teeter, which is a you know a local chain with me. So, so Mike, if you're in Cincinnati, do you have um, like Piggly Wiggly's there? I'm not sure. I mean, I live outside of Cincinnati. Okay. So. Yeah. What, <laughs> I, um, I have no idea. What grocery store um, chains do you have? Oh, we have Kroger, Meyer, uh -huh. places like that. Kroger has a really good frozen food uh, aisle. Um, good because it's... Um, they have a lot of variety. I mean, you you know, if you go to like a Whole Foods or a, you know, uh, Trader Joe's is a bad example because they carry their own brand, but Whole Foods tends to stick with this type of stuff, right? And then you go to, um, you know, some of the run of the mill type stuff like um, like safe like the Safeways or Vons or Gennardi's and stuff like that. They tend to be a little higher end, but kind of carry just kind of the classics. And then when you go to like Walmart or Target and things like that, they tend to, to also have a wide variety, but they're really catering to their audience, right? They'll, they might have like 120 different lean cuisine varieties, but, um, but only have like five different pizza varieties. Um, Kroger, I found, just has like, I don't know, whoever their frozen food buyer is for the, for at least for our region, it's pretty amazing because they have a lot of different brands and a lot maybe of maybe they watch your show yeah maybe, maybe. <laughs> so uh, so I, I'm actually a big fan of Kroger and and a decent price too for the stuff you know as I continue to eat this this has a little more spice than I thought but so, so does it seem to get hotter the more you eat it I don't know I don't know if maybe some parts of it were not um, my first couple bites didn't have as many of the chilies. So, I don't know. Any other questions? Um, yeah, actually, uh, there's, a, there's a couple, not relating to the review, uh, but there is um, Chris Live 744 asked, have you tried the Boston Market chicken, broccoli, and cheese casserole? I'm not sure if he's the same guy who, who always asks me that question. Um, <laughs> I have. I've never reviewed it. Um, I, just, I just never reviewed it. I've, I've tried it. I don't remember. I think there was like a sale one day on Boston Market, and I had – it was like two for four bucks or something like that, and I've tried it. It's, I mean, here's the thing with Boston Market. Boston Market makes really, really good comfort food. Not necessarily good quality, just the stuff that – I, I kind of can I kind of view Boston Market as do you have Boston Market frozen where you are? Oh yeah. Okay. I view Boston Market as kind of like the gateway from Hungry Man to Stouffer's. Okay. Like I think Hungry Man is is more about quantity, um, and I think Stouffer's is about really good like what I call DHG down home goodness comfort food type, but good quality. Stouffer's, I think, is just like, in terms of mass market, I think Stouffer's is like, just has a great, they just do it right. It's not all healthy. No, in fact, very few of it is healthy, but they do it great. Boston Market, I feel, is like, kind of like right in between them. Um, there's also another brand that's mostly on the West Coast called Claim Jumper. And that's a, it's actually a restaurant chain, and they have a, a, a whole set of frozen meals that I think Boston Market kind of falls into. And my point is, good. I've had good experiences with Boston Market. I've had okay experiences with Boston Market. But almost all of them have a whole bunch of trans fat in them. And so I tend to not spend a lot of time uh, 
with Boston Market. I just don't, I don't know. That, that's basically it. I, I've done all the classics. All right, we probably have time for like two more questions, if there's any more. Okay, so um, out, of, out of the lar uh, here, Jackie asks, uh, out of the large TV dinners, uh, which one do you think was the best? Out of the large TV, oh, in terms of the, I assume she means, uh, or m maybe it's a he, uh, I assume they mean the, like, the classic ones, the classic TV dinners. Uh, I'm not sure. It's, um, it's, uh, it says, you know, the ones with, like, four ounces of food in them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. If we're talking, like, the old school ones in the foil trays that you put in the oven, you know, you didn't put it in the microwave, like the, the, like the old school Swanson TV dinners, by far, uh, I got to go with the, with the classic fried chicken. I mean, that was, that was awesome. It had the fried chicken, it had the corn, it had the mashed potatoes, and it had the brownie. Um, the second down the line is the other classic, which is Salisbury steak, which had also had the mashed potatoes, and that one had, if I recall correctly, like a medley of peas and carrots. <laughs> so, uh, once in a blue moon asked uh, about the the, the um, frozen meal you're eating right now uh, on a, a spiciness scale one to five, five the hottest. What would you rate it? Are you there? Yes. No idea what happened. Yeah, did you drop out or something? Yeah, it's, it gave me an error. Hmm. That's something that, uh, that'll be interesting to see how the YouTube uh, embed handles that. Um, well, anyway, it, assuming that person is... Yeah, this is, it's odd. It's a little buggy. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I would give this Cedar Lane uh, Roasted Chili Rileno, which is $4.55. I would give this a solid four star. I think it's it's good. I mean, it's, uh, again, ease, ease of prep is, is good. It's I'm not convinced it would be that much better in the oven, so save yourself the time. Just go the four minutes in the microwave. Um, spiciness factor is good. Um, you know, it's it's better than I, what I initially thought. But even if it was like super spicy to my liking, I don't think it would go higher than a four star. I, I give this a four star rating. So I think that's it for now. Um, this was thanks for the you know 30 or so viewers who joined the uh, my first Google Hangout. Like I said, I'm gonna I'm not always for the, oh so for those of you who who joined late, um, I'm not always going to be reviewing per se uh, during these Hangouts, but I'm hoping to do a Hangout once a week. Um, and if you want to join like like Mike did today, um, go to the Freezer Burns. Uh, Google Plus page and uh, add Freezer Burns to your circles and I'll add you back and then you'll be able to join via video uh, for next Hangout. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. All right, Mike, thanks for joining. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, and uh, you know, Mike, I know you, I think you saw this on, the, on my Freezer Burns Facebook page, right? Yeah, yeah. I originally saw you uh, say that you're going to be doing a hang a hangout on Facebook, and then I went over here to Google Plus and made sure to circle the page. So that's how I found out about the hangout. 
Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, I, I will be announcing on Facebook and on Twitter, um, you know, the thing about the Hangouts, the, the good thing about the Hangouts is that I can just set this and, and start it up whenever I want. The bad things about the Hangouts is, uh, Hangouts is that I, uh, I'm really bad at planning in advance. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say to all those people who are watching uh, on the stream Add me to the circle so you'll be notified when when I do um, start hanging out. And we'll, uh, you know, this is still an experiment, so I'm still trying to figure out how it all works, and we'll see how this saves to YouTube and and figure out all of that. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks again, Mike. All right, see ya.